Maintenance rail cars usually aren't the most conventional looking pieces of rolling stock to ride the rails, often consisting of numerous sized wheels and a variety of machines to determine the quality of the tracks it's rolling on. Some of these rail cars are so intricate that they're built as individual units from scratch, while other track geometry cars are converted from older rail cars. However, one of these widely used track inspection cars was built from the frame of a subway and was eventually transported to another country halfway around the world for preservation. Such unusual circumstances just so happen to describe the interesting story of Sperry Rail Car 140. The existence of the subway-based inspection car can be traced back to an increased demand for R33 subway cars for the New York City subway system. In 1962, NYCT ordered 964 R33 and R36 cars for the IRT lines, built by St. Louis Car Company, with the R33 order consisting of 540 IRT cars. But in the summer of 1963, there was a push to get more of the new Blue Arrow cars to the Flushing line sooner, so that all the cars would be delivered in time for the 1964 New York World's Fair. Due to the pressure placed by the fair's organizer, Robert Moses, the last 40 R33s ended up as single units for the Flushing line, equipped with large picture windows and two-tone turquoise livery, along with the 390 R36s. However, this resulted in some leftover R33 shells for the IRT mainline in bright red and yellow grab irons and standard drop sash windows. 34 of the leftover R33 shells were assembled and delivered at the tail end of the R36 order between late 1964 and early 1965, known as mainline R36s, or R36ML, thus completing the 424-car R36 order and therefore the last day division cars would be built by St. Louis Car Company. Meanwhile, railroads in the rest of the U.S. were in a state of decay due to crushing competition from trucks and cars, so there was an increased demand for track maintenance and testing in order to detect and prevent derailment hazards in the worn-out rails. This gave rise to track geometry companies such as Sperry, who was already converting retired doodlebugs for this very purpose, and they just so happened to purchase one of these spare R33 shells to build a relatively new inspection car. The newest rail car on the roster, numbered 140, was built with this leftover R33 shell in their Danbury shops in December 1965, as it was painted in a bright yellow livery as it was equipped with state-of-the-art track testing equipment. In addition to its engineering-related components, the rail car was equipped with a small diesel motor, had its side doors sealed over and replaced with two driver's doors on each end, and had its front doors sealed with three windows, with the rear windows being larger than the front, as well as the front headlight and air horn. As soon as it was built, it was placed in the service in the Northeast, specifically on Penn Central trackage in regions such as Boston, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh, since the company was partially owned by Penn Central at the time. Of course, it also made a few trips off of Penn Central trackage to places such as Raritan, New Jersey and Long Island, since Ferry was and still is contracted by a number of different railroads to perform track maintenance. But only 10 years later, the unique rail car would be relocated for work very far from Penn Central trackage, specifically on the Hammersley Irons Lines in the northwestern region of Western Australia, in order to inspect the rails which were worn out from heavy ore trains. Here, 140 used electromagnetic induction and ultrasonics, in which it would continuously electrify and send sound waves to short sections of rail and look for distortions in the magnetic field and returning waves. 140 performed this work with another Sperry rail car, specifically number 141, but this rail car was later returned to the US, while 140 continued to work as it was repainted with a black band a paint scheme which is more common among other Sperry cars nowadays. After it was supposedly wrecked, 140 was sent to a rather unexpected location, the Dorigo Steam Railway Museum. Here, it remains since its donation in 2000 where it awaits restoration to operating condition as an unusual addition to the large collection of rare Australian steam locomotives. Throughout its operational career, SRS 140 managed to inspect the rails of both American Class 1s and Australian mining firms all while being the first and so far only mainline maintenance vehicle to be directly based on a subway design. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. The story of this rail car is truly unlike that of any maintenance vehicle, let alone a subway car, and its overlooked history of international track inspection makes it a perfect entry for this series. Although this technically isn't the first time an R33 shell was used outside of the NYC subway system, it was the first time a subway shell was used for mainline maintenance service in two different nations, 
and its usefulness and unusual origin earned the railcar a spot in railway preservation for decades to come. Thank you again for watching. Credit for all the photos used go to their respective photographers, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Have a good day.